This week in moto from around the world in under 10 minutes. So you don't have to go searching everywhere and you are up to date. The most interesting thing that happened was what Jet potentially mistakenly said at the press conference. When I was there, I was expecting a follow-up question from people. And you're only allowed to say one question. And I wanted to say something, but unfortunately, I said what I said about the metal grates. Because honestly, I really wanted to know. I've been talking about it. Forever. Anyway, I digress. Race Day Live, this is what they said. Haley Shanley from Race Day Live. This question's for you, Jet. Uh, one thing us fans have been looking forward to all season and preseason is you battling with Eli Tomek. So as you're approaching him, what were you strategizing? Um, it was just kind of learning this, uh, obviously, how he kind of flows and kind of learning where kind of the kink in the armor could be almost and um it was cool like I kind of like it was cool to kind of follow him because like uh obviously nowadays it's not like the, the the exact same as the beast as it used to be um ouch young man I don't think he really meant to say what he actually said and you can take it out of context which is exactly what Moto Media has done along with what he said as far as 72 races that's the goal he didn't come up with that reporters asked him that question and they ran with it him saying that tomac is not the beast he used to be well you know what he's older he's got some injuries he's not letting us know what's going on bubba in his podcast this week was saying that as you get older you just need to have a better setup and with that achilles I'm assuming he hasn't been able to test as much as he would like, and he is working into it. We will only see Tomac get better as the season goes on, and most of the other riders, who knows, they might start falling off because I'm surprised we don't already have as many injuries yet as we have in the past, and there has been some considerable changes to Supercross this year with no more Dragonbacks. On my channel, I've said it, to nauseam how bad they are and i'm sure everyone has as well it's a safety thing it's better whoops only having nine of them huh it could be one of those things where moto gp you limit from a thousand cc to what was it they went to 850 and speeds were actually increased well if they have a lower amount of whoops a smaller number and they're shorter it's going to increase the speed so we might see more whoop crashes I don't know. That, to me, I wouldn't change the whoops. I like the whoops big. That's what's really separate the real men in Supercrosses, those giant whoops. That's why Arena Cross is incredibly scary. It's because of those suckers are 10 feet tall. If I'm continuing on to more news, we've got Geyser winning one of the warm-up races for MXGP. The season doesn't actually start until March. So we got the first one, March 9th and 10th. So these guys are just warming up. And you had Geyser win, then you had Febra, and then you had Fernandez, and then you had Liam Everts and MX2. And after the race, you had Ducati come out and start testing their new Desmo motorcycle. I actually have the individual that made this video. He's going to be on the podcast this week, Friday at 8 a.m., Mountain Standard Time or 10 a.m. Eastern Time, if you want to check that out. We're going to ask him a few questions, what he saw there. With the Desmo, what I've heard is for MotoGP bikes, they rev to the moon. They're able to really accelerate and make lots of horsepower. I'm sure this bike is going to make more horsepower than any other bike. It's somewhat of a Honda frame, and we'll get more information come Friday on the live podcast. However, I feel that the low-end torque is going to be hindering just a bit with that that Desmo motor in it as opposed to the the traditional way of going about it with with what we have with valves. So, make sure you look forward to that. It's cool to see them ride after the track was already rough and gnarly. Make sure you go check out that video. If we move on to some of the injuries. Well, Nate Thrasher went down incredibly hard on the jump that was second to the last triple into a long left-hand corner. He says he has a bone contusion and a concussion, and that was it. The rumors at the track when I was there, people started texting me saying, hey, Nate is being sent to the hospital because 
the Asterix Metal crew doesn't know what's what's going on. And that's the best thing that they could do. They have so much equipment there. They've got x-rays and whatnot. But an MRI machine and a CT scan, you're talking a million upon millions of dollars worth of equipment. I don't know if their facility, their semi has that sort of equipment. You know there's an x-ray machine in there and they have the top level when it comes to medical personnel on hand for these guys but it's interesting that he said it's just a bone contusion well they've got a break off which is going to be great for him so from a PR standpoint that's the best thing you can do is just say hey concussion that's it Chase Sexton he says that he has a bone bruise as well a bone contusion essentially in his clutch hand maybe that's why he didn't get as good a start as he has before and as a rider I've ridden with broken hands, broken wrists. It's not fun. I'm sure you guys and the viewers let me know. You can somewhat do it. He managed it. I want to say that it's a little bit more harsh than what he's leading on. Potentially maybe the Deegan thing. We all know Deegan essentially said the same thing, but then it came out that he might actually have some screws and plates in that, that wrist. So these guys don't want to give anything to their competitors because as much as motorcycle racing is about talent it's also a mental war as well I, the art of war is a great book to read if you're in the midst of a local championship at your local series or whatnot and just in life and business it's a great book rider d ended up going down in a different triple section because man if you watched my track analysis videos you had to set up for these guys and the riders in press day took a while. I was expecting them to get the rhythms in one or two laps. But no, we had full-blown factory guys not jumping everything until session two. Which, to me, it says something. These lips were huge. The landings were big. Some of the actual lips on some of the triples were quite a bit smaller. You had to go super fast. And these guys had to be very smooth and that's essentially what Tomac has been doing he's been getting through the races for sure Josh Cartwright he ended up going down as well in a triple section and he's got a separated AC joint which it's just when your collarbone gets released from uh, your shoulder and that's one of the things where I wish these guys were Kevin Windham style again with the chest protectors I know Ryan Hughes says it inhibits your range of motion. I get it, but did I want to know, I should ask uh, Kevin Windham if he's ever done anything to his collarbones and the AC joint. Yeah, you can break your collarbone, but the AC joint is just when it gets pushed down really hard when you crash and you shoulder into something. A lot of the riders, some of the interviews that I had, pretty much everyone has an AC joint injury and you can recover from it. It takes about six weeks, but you can get back on the bike. And we had jerry robin with his seat bump saying that that's the only way he can ride to keep him up front because of his separation but these guys just don't wear proper padding here and the ac is going to be the first thing that goes there's an argument there for sure when it comes to moto gp well we've got ducati on top yet again with a bagnaya with just owning the preseason qualifying times most notably that i would point out is that KTM and Aprilia are struggling, but you've got Marquez on the privateer Ducati, and he's actually finished sixth in the final day, just a few tenths off of the fastest lap, which that, that tells you something here. I would look forward to him this season. I definitely want to see him do really well. And in Arena Cross, I really love how they have an open class where you can run a 252 stroke or a 450 or a 250F. Well, at round nine in Reno, Ryan Breeze went 1-1 both nights and the points lead is getting smaller between defending championship Kyle Peters. And a lot of these guys are starting to race the Arena Cross series. They're doing a great job with the format. They're building the sport and they're paying the riders pretty good i'm not saying that supercross doesn't they do make quite a bit of money there as well but if you are somewhat of a guy that has a hard time getting in the main events well you can honestly make more money by winning an arena cross than finishing 22nd at a supercross well that was 10 minutes till next time keep it wfo guys and thank you so much i am 500 subscribers away from hitting my goal of 50,000. 000 Ba-ra-da-da-da. -da -da.